In this lesson, I'm going to go over how you would be able to find and read data in any event procedure that you'd be writing in an Access application. If you recall from an earlier lesson, I mentioned that one of the considerations in using event procedures is knowing the data that you have access to inside that event procedure. And that's what is the primary intention of this lesson. For demonstration purposes, I will be using the sample DB access database that's in the work files folder for this course. You'll see I have the form called employees open, which allows the application to list the employees that are saved in the employees table. You'll notice on the properties for the form, the data record source is the employees table, which is here. So if we were to create an event procedure, say a procedure that would run on the load event. Now I pick that because in the load event of the form, there is data loaded into the form. That means it opens the record source in this case the employees table and loads in the records from that table not only into their appropriate text boxes on the form but also any fields that are not displayed on the form but exist in the table get loaded into the record set that's used by that form so what that means is the value of any field in that table can be used in this event procedure, whether there's a text box on the form for it or not. If we go back to the form, you'll see the fields that I use are the phone field the department field, the manager field, the hired field, and I create a new field called name, which is a concatenation of the first name and last name fields. If we were to look at the layout of the employee table to see all of the fields that are in there, we would see that there's fields not specified with text boxes on this form, but would exist when we load the form. Here's the first and last name field, the manager, department, phone, hired. There's an ID field. That doesn't exist. So what we could have is we would say, OK, great. I could specify the ID field in here. And it's really very simple. I would just mention to the computer that I am looking at the ID field. I can actually create a variable I'm making it along because in the definition of that field in the table, ID notice is a long integer. So we need to make sure that any value we're putting in to a variable fits the size of it. So I need to declare a long variable. And I can say that the value of that would be equal to the ID field in the table. It's standard notation to enclose any field either in the table or if a query were the source of this form, the query, any field in these square brackets. It's not required unless the field name has a space in it. If we go back to the table, you'll see that first name and last name are fields that have spaces in them. If you recall back to the course when you learned to code in VBA, you know that a space is the delimiter in VBA. When the code is read, 
the computer sees a space and says, oh, that name is done. So if we did not enclose a field name inside the square brackets and it had a space, it would be looking for a field name with only, say, first or last. And the, the name word would confuse it. But if we were to enclose it completely in the square brackets, that would be a name it could work. Now this operation wouldn't because this is a string we're trying to put into a long and that wouldn't work, but that would be how we would refer to the name of the field in the table. So the data that's contained in the fields, in any of the fields of the table or the query, that's the record source of the form, is available. Also, the values of any properties of any of the objects on the form are available. So all the text boxes, all the buttons, all the list boxes, all of that, any of their properties, including the value property, which is saying what is the data contents of that object, is also available in any event procedure on this form. Lastly, the field of any table could be read through an object called a record set, which we'll get to later on in this course. So the data that's available to you are the names of fields in the table or query, and those should be enclosed in square brackets. Whether they have a space in the name or not, it's just good practice to do that. The properties and values of any of the form objects on the form and using a record set object fields of any table in the access database.